Uh, my name is Nick Faber. I'm an elementary science specialist beginning my 32nd year here in St. Paul Public Schools. Thank you. And it's been an honor to be here these 32 years, and I'm currently serving as president for the St. Paul Federation of Teachers. Um, the program we're gonna kick off today um, brings me back to the one of, some of the 12 years that I spent at Johnny Johnson Elementary on the east side of St. Paul. Um, a community school that was embedded in the community, created by the community, and when we had times where our enrollment was low and where we knew we could reach more students on the east side of St. Paul, um, our members in that building self-organized and got out on the doors and talked about the great things that John A. Johnson did to our neighbors and our families on the east side of St. Paul. And we would just go out and knock on doors and say, are there kids in here? Are, where are you going to school? What do you like about your school? Well, let me tell you what Johnny Johnson has to offer. Because we think we can provide the best education for your kids. And we're right down the street. And that's what this program is all about. It's about getting out, talking about the great things that are happening in St. Paul Public Schools, seeing what we can learn more from our parents and community members, and encouraging them to come back to St. Paul. The Select SPPS program came about during our last round of contract negotiations. Our bargaining team reached an agreement with the school district to jointly seek funding for our schools. In addition to partnering on lobbying and state and federal levels, pursuing funding referendum this fall, and seeking additional funds um, from large corporations and nonprofits in town, we also agreed to partner on a program to increase enrollment in St. Paul Public Schools. Select SPPS is a partnership between St. Paul Public Schools supported by our national affiliate, the American Federation of Teachers. It is designed to boost enrollment in our district by talking directly with students and families about the amazing opportunities in SPPS. I wanna thank both the district and American Federation of Teachers for their generous support of this program. If we can give them a round of applause. All summer long, our family advocates will be going from door to door in targeted neighborhoods, and you'll see those advocates behind you here. They're gonna be going to targeted neighborhoods talking with our neighbors about public schools. They will also be attending community events, making connections with families and, our, and other neighbors, and sharing information about our public schools. Advocates will be equipped to answer questions about our schools, enroll students when they, are when they are talking to these families, and support students who are at risk of dropping out. These advocates are SPF team members who are passionate about public education and working with our students here in St. Paul. Educators who know the incredible things happening in classrooms across St. Paul Public Schools. Um, they are educators who are, have firsthand um, information and experience with the incredible things that are happening in St. Paul Public Schools and they are excited to share these stories with our neighbors this summer. These educators are in a unique position of being able to tell firsthand accounts of what's happening in their buildings and why families should choose SPPS. We are incredibly um, fortunate to be joined by St. Paul Mayor Melvin Carter today, St. Paul Superintendent Dr. Joe Gothard, um, AFT National Executive Vice President and former SPFT President Mary Catherine Ricker, and the National President of the American Federation of Teachers, Randy Weingarten. And I would say about 20 or 30 Discovery Club students right down the hall. All right. So each of these distinguished guests will um, say a few words and I'll share some more specific details about the program before we open it up for questions. So I'm gonna hand it over to the mayor first to say a few words. 
Thank you all for being here, Representative Murphy. It's good to see you. Members of our school board who are here as well, it's great to see you, uh, as well as the distinguished panel of uh, speakers we have. Uh, also, Bobby Casper, great to see you as well. To see this uh, team and this partnership is very important. I'm Melvin Carter. Uh, I'm the mayor of this city. I'm a product of our St. Paul Public Schools. I'm a parent in our St. Paul Public Schools. And I am thrilled for the opportunity to ensure that uh, every person who lives in our city uh, understands the incredible treasure uh, and the incredible resource that our schools are. You know, uh, dating back a, a, a number of years, schools have been considered the centerpiece of community. And that's an old-fashioned idea uh, that I think has some real important implications for us. When we think about the importance of having schools right at the center of community, places that we know, places that we know we can be proud of, places that we understand, uh, all of the incredible things that happen. You know, I think too often uh, we, uh, we don't know. Uh, when our students at Central High School win a statewide robotics championship. We don't know when our students win a, a, a math tournament or a debate league contest. We don't know those things. Uh, and too often, uh, those stories go unspoken while other stories of our, schools, of our schools get spoken. So I'm looking forward to see, ensuring that the incredible thing that St. Paul students do the incredible things that St. Paul teachers do, the incredible things that our St. Paul schools are doing on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month, and year-to-year -year basis, that those stories are told so that our families understand the great treasure and resource that we have right here in our schools and that we can continue to build community together in that way. Thank you for the opportunity to join you here. I'll look forward to us working together, and thank you all for your work. Thank you. Greetings, everyone. I'm Joe Gother, the proud superintendent of St. Paul Public Schools, and, and thank you for being here today. <laughs> Mayor Carter, thank you so much for joining us today as well. I also have several board members here, and I'd like to introduce them. We're joined today by our chair, Zuki Ellis, our vice chair, Steve Marchese, treasurer, John Schumacher, director, Mary Vanderwert, and director, John Broderick. Let's give them a round of applause for being here. We also have uh, the proud administration, staff, uh, parents, family members, community members here today as well. And that's what this is all about. Select SPPS, our students, our schools, and our city. And this collaboration came to be because we recognize that when we work together and when we share about our school district in a way that strengthens it, people will want to come here. And I can tell you why they'll want to come here because I've had the unique opportunity this, this year as a first year superintendent uh, to go and visit every one of our schools. And with every twist of a doorknob or pull of a door handle, um, I've learned amazing things about our school district. And I think as the mayor alluded to, uh, there are many narratives, many stories out there, uh, but I've, saw, I've seen committed teachers, I've seen committed staff members, I've seen parents who take time out of their day uh, to partner with our schools. I've seen community organizations present and in our schools deepening the learning and understanding and opportunities for our students. And most importantly, I've seen students who are learning at an incredibly high level. I've seen students who challenge themselves. I've seen students who work together as part of a community. And what Select SPPS means to me is that our arms are open, our doors are open, and our hearts are open to how we can work together as a community and strengthen our school district. You all know, many of you know, uh, that we are creating a new strategic plan. Uh, one of the things in that strategic plan is to partner and engage with our family and community in new and better ways. You might also know that we are, uh, have received several uh, reoccurring years of a deficit budget, of deficit spending in our budget, uh, budget cuts, and you know it's very challenging. One of the ways that we can, uh, that we can help strengthen that is by enrollment. Re enrollment is revenue for our school district, but it's more than just revenue. It's, it's, more, it's, it's more about how does our district fit with our community, how are the people, our parents, our community members proud about our school district, and how can we work differently with them. We also, uh, I am poised to ask our board for their support for a referendum on November 6th. And uh, this very much, uh, this kind of effort in getting out and sharing about our school district and all the work that's underway and all the great work in our future is a big part of this as well. So again, on behalf of St. Paul Public Schools, our Board of Education, our many 
uh, partners, SPFT and AFT, thank you so much for this important collaboration. Our advocates who are poised to get out and give SPPS our best, um, thank you all so very much. Thank you, Mayor Carter, Superintendent Gothard. It is wonderful to be back here and see so many friends and neighbors. Uh, my name is Mary Catherine Ricker, and among the titles, I am a National Board Certified Middle School English teacher here in the state of Minnesota. Uh, very privileged to be the Executive Vice President of the 1.7 million member American Federation of Teachers right now. Um, per but perhaps of all the titles I bring here today, the one I actually am proudest of is mom. I am the mother of one SPPS graduate and one soon to be graduate and and I so this this idea of welcoming our students and their families into St. Paul Public Schools is actually very personal as well as professional to me. Uh, when our oldest child um, was ready for kindergarten, we started the school search process and we visited uh, dozens of elementary schools to see what they were like. We looked at um, the middle schools that they would feed into. I looked to join the site council of the middle school in my neighborhood so that eight years from now I could feel like it was you know, ready to go for, for my child. Um, I went to the school choice fair that was in January. And um, at the end of the day, we, uh, because I was such a fan of the, middle of the Montessori philosophy, even though I am not a Montessori trained teacher, um, through the application process, we um, applied for and got into J.J. Hill Elementary. And it was a, it was a magical children's house year. Um, and uh, you know, every day I would ask my daughter, like, how was school today? And she'd say, fine or good, which I learned from my elementary school licensed colleagues that is a very developmentally appropriate response. <laughs> Except I noticed a few weeks into the school year on Thursdays, she would say, I would say, how was school? And she would say, oh, today was wonderful. Today, Senora Tiffany taught us colors. And you know, this is Roja, and, and that is Amarillo. And, that. and she would just go around the house, and she would name all these colors in Spanish. And then the next week, same sort of thing would happen. School was good. School was fine. And then Thursday, suddenly, she would lighten up, and she would say, oh, today, Senora Tiffany taught us numbers. And she would go, and she would start counting things in Spanish. And so one night, I said to my husband, I'm like, do you think our daughter maybe has a proclivity for language? And he was like, I don't know, let me, you know, so we, so the next couple weeks we sort of tested out this same pattern and sure enough, and now we were stuck with this amazing decision. Stay at this school that we had gotten accepted to and that she also loved, or because of the world of opportunities in St. Paul schools, see if she could be enrolled in one of our Spanish immersion or bilingual programs. And so we took a chance and we reapplied and she ended up getting into Adam's Spanish immersion. And, um, and after having a conversation uh, with some other families about that, I, uh, another, another mom said to me, she said, you know, I feel like I had the same situation. I went into, like, I went into studying St. Paul Public Schools, not sure of what I would find. What I didn't realize is how difficult the decision would be because there were so many incredible opportunities. And so we have these pockets of isolated conversations where we know what exists. And we have, the, we have a pattern. St. Paul Public Schools has tried a lot of things to show off, showcase the work we do here, the world-class staff we have, the programs and opportunities we have. Um, and a lot of them have been built historically for moms who look like me and moms with my background. And what St. Paul Public Schools is doing now, and with the assistance and with the partnership of St. Paul Federation of Teachers, and I couldn't be prouder of our President Randy Weingarten leading a collaboration at our national level too to help um, support this work. What we are doing now is making sure that our school uh, you know, our, our school options are, are brought to the community in a way that allows for a conversation, not just a showcase, for an actual discussion about what, uh, you know, what is the sort of school your child is looking for. Here are the sort of opportunities we provide. Here is where we provide them. And it, it's the beginning of the discussion that I would hope lasts the entire time a child is enrolled in St. Paul Public Schools. Because once we have engaged in a sincere Sincere conversation about the school your child deserves on your turf where you are raising your child, 
that conversation has every right to continue in first grade and third grade and fifth grade and eighth grade and ninth grade and your senior year throughout their entire experience. And that is what we're starting to grow with this project today. So while we look small, this project is going to be incredible in the intangible scope it ends up creating. And I am so proud to be home to help launch it and help tell people that they will be they will be proud they will be excited and they will have a world of opportunities at their fingertips when they enroll their child in St. Paul Public Schools. Thank you. So you know when you go when you go last first you're really short. <laughs> Sorry. I'm really short, um, <laughs> so I'm going to take the microphone out. <laughs> but when you go last, you really just want to say, ditto, ditto, <laughs> ditto, 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 and thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, I was thinking as, you know, as, as the mayor was speaking, as Nick was speaking, as, super, as su your, your new indefatigable superintendent was speaking, um, you know, what can I, you know, I said, okay, I'm jettisoning my notes, and I'm saying, what can I, as the national president, bring, um, separate and apart from funding, to do this work? And that's the, I want to, I want to start where Nick started, which was, I met Nick when he was a teacher at Johnny Johnson, and the notion of the community school that he spoke about that still is there and that teachers would actually walk the walk because they understood in their gut what Mary Catherine as a mom was speaking about, what the mayor and superintendent were speaking about, that this is community work. This is not, we are in our classrooms for X number of hours, we go home and you know grade papers for X number of hours, and that's our job. And parents have another job, and students have another job. We are community. And if we don't actually understand that a community means how do we ensure that schools are the center of them, and how do we ensure that kids, and I say this, this week, after seeing all these pictures at the southern border, that we have an obligation in this country. Did I kill the mic or am I okay? <laughs> that we have an obligation in this country to make sure our children, all of God's children, sorry to invoke God, but all of God's children are entitled to safe and welcoming space in schools and in the United States of America. That's our obligation under Plyler v. Doe and our obligation morally. And so you think about how do you make this real for all children, for all children. And that's why Johnny Johnson, Nick, community schools, wraparound services, meeting the needs of parents and communities so that parents feel like the school's a place where they want to send their kids, so that teachers feel like this is a place they want to teach, so that kids feel that they are really engaged and they want to be in school, like on those Thursdays, <laughs> and they want to be there. And what Nick and the St. Paul Federation understood and have understood for a very long time is that we have to walk the walk. We can't just be in our little corners doing the best job we can be teaching, but we have to be part of the community that makes school at its center. And that's what the contract negotiations were about when we say, wait a second, no, we need nurses, we need guidance counselors to make a school safe and welcoming for kids, we need that. But we also need to take responsibility to try to figure out how to fund that, particularly in a period of time when post the 2008 recession, there's a lot of states, the state was not one of them, but a lot of states that decided that everything was gonna go to tax cuts 
instead of going to funding our future. Now, even with all of that, we still need to find more funding. And this is what the referendum is about, but this is also what bringing kids back to school and ensuring that people in St. Paul, not just the people who have pulled back the curtain and said, oh my God, these choices are fantastic, but making sure that school is that safe, welcoming place for all kids. And it starts with conversations with parents, with knocking on doors, with bringing people together. And that's why I am really, really proud to be part of this. We've done this in Baltimore. We've done this in other places. We have community schools all across the country now. Um, and I'm really, really glad to be part and honored to be part of this launch in St. Paul. Our country will be better off when more and more people understand that our country is the beauty of its diversity. Our country will be better off when public schools are fully funded and when we can ensure opportunity for all kids. That doesn't happen in an instant. It happens with lots and lots and lots of people walking their walk. And that is what we are doing in St. Paul today. Thank you. So thank you to all of our guests for their words this morning. I want to just uh, go through a few more details about the program before we um, actually take some of our guests out on the doors to um, do some initial knocks. So um, this program is a partnership, as I said before, between um, St. Paul Federation of Teachers, the American Federation of Teachers, and St. Paul Public Schools. Um, and this wouldn't be possible without the support of all three of those bodies. So. Um, the program will begin next Monday, June 25th, and run for six weeks over the summer. Ten SPFT members have been hired as advocates and trained to hold in-depth conversations on the doors. And as I said, some of those folks are here today. Um, the advocates will knock on 10,000 doors uh, across the city of St. Paul and hold approximately 2,500 conversations with residents. They will gather this information from parents and other neighbors about what makes a quality school. What do they feel makes a quality school? And report that information back to both SPFT and the St. Paul Public Schools. They will also invite parents who do not have their students currently enrolled in our public schools to register. These door knocks will occur um, in targeted neighborhoods in St. Paul focusing on increasing enrollment at nine schools, including Hamlin Elementary, where we are this morning. We at the union are incredibly um, excited to partner with the district on this and with our national affiliate, and we look forward to having these great conversations with our community out on the doors this summer and hear what, we, what we're going to hear. 